Hey. Hey, Glenn. Sorry I didn't get back to you earlier, but I had been busy working with the cell on a couple of investigations. One was at the post office in Kempville, and the other one was uh, based on uh, people who claim to be religious but are cosmetic Christians or cosmetic Catholics. And uh, one was with the cell themselves, and the other one was with a uh, a nun who in purgatory is responsible for women. What? Uh, <laughs> let me understand that straight. A nun in purgatory is responsible for women who... Yeah, well, women are not allowed to speak directly to anybody that's alive, uh, but they can uh, accept to have an intermediary uh, who will uh, answer questions on their behalf. Mm. The woman tells what she wants to say, and and then the... You don't get the voice of the woman. Uh, the nun steps in and says, "So and so said." And uh, whereas with men, it can be directly, like with Tom. Why is that? I have no idea, um, because they don't discuss it. But, but. That's the way it is, so oh. probably because nuns run the show for women right? oh. Oh. even after death that's 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 uh, I don't know why that sounds crazy to me <laughs> a lot to wrap well, it head is around. it is crazy, <laughs> <laughs> but that's the way it comes through. The cell have no problem putting somebody uh, on on the uh, catmobile communications, uh, but they're all men, whereas women have a special uh, problem, I guess, one would call it maybe it's because they don't want to be on. I don't know. Hmm. Maybe they want information passed out, but not uh, have themselves there to answer questions. Got to remember that most of the women uh, die with most of the money because they inherit their husband's estate. And... uh, Usually, that's a much larger amount than what they would have had on their own. Usually. Yeah. So maybe they don't want to discuss funds. Maybe the nuns don't want them to talk about what they do with the money that is uh, ending up in the nuns' hands. Uh, because that's where most of the money goes is to the nuns. They are the, as I've told you before, the largest uh, uh, money bags on Wall Street. You know, it's in our world. I, I similar activity as far as women. Uh, the female side, as far as like in in the system, the control, um, like uh, the Amazonians you hear about. I, as far as I can know, the symbolism I see, like they are not ever seen. They don't speak to anybody directly. Like Neanderthal was more uh, flamboyant, I guess you could say. You could see, even though they didn't want to be seen, but you could still see 
their influence. You can still see this, uh, you know, symbols that reference them. Uh, you can see that they had direct contact with humans, but as far as, as the Amazonians, it's like they they don't have any contact. They do it through some type of intermediary or something. Yeah. So maybe it's, maybe, I don't know, maybe there's a reason for that. I don't know. They seem to... Well, the nuns didn't get to where they are by accident. Hmm. You know? So I, I called you the other day because I... I noticed uh, oh, by you there was a talk, uh, there's a tornado. And right away in my mind I thought about the big 8 O, And yeah. possibly that could have been a symbol for those people in the system to go on with their... Because uh, I, I remember that certain section in the 8 O where, yeah. like, it just kind of stops, where you know it changes, it shifts. Um, so I don't know if you were looking at that, if you noticed that. Well, uh, I know that there were six uh, tornadoes in the Ottawa Valley. Three on on the Hull side, Gatineau mm-hmm. side, Gate in Water. And yeah. three on the Ottawa side. On the yeah, the Ottawa side. Uh, the ones in Gatineau were mostly in the area where I used to live. When I lived there in Ottawa, I li- really lived on the Gatineau side of the river, where I was building my cart. Mm-hmm. And uh, the one on. The ones on the Ottawa side are in the south end of Ottawa, which is the closest to here. And uh, we had a lot of uh, broken branches, broken trees uh, on uh, on the farm, uh, but no destruction of anything that I've found yet. Came close, uh, but but not uh, any destruction. Yeah, I, I, that's why I was with this tornado I, or these tornadoes. I didn't think it was meant for any cataclysm. I thought it was meant as more of like a messaging. Like of... well, it, could, it could very well be that you know, pointing to the the nation's capital uh without without uh, uh any previous uh attack this seemed almost like an attack on the national capital hmm. now, they don't have uh there's no hist is there a history of tornadoes no. not not in this area more on the west coast or more in um uh, uh, i'd say the the middle of the country coming up from the u s okay um, in the, in the winnipeg uh, saskatoon area more than anywhere else yeah so I was thinking because I know in New York I don't think they've had Tornadoes, uh, it's not something that's yeah. normal over here on the East Coast. Well, the, the nuns seem to be more interested in uh, asking uh, about individuals which uh, they call cosmetic Christians or cosmetic Catholics. People who say they are people who go to church and 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 all of that, but yet when you look at how they deal with other people, 
it's uh, self-service is the the main activity that you you can identify. They uh, they do everything for gain, personal gain, and little for anybody else unless there is publicity involved. Oh, that's you know that's I know that's the modus operandi for a lot of uh, celebrities because you know they uh, whenever there's like a uh, an outcry from the public, that's when they'll make a stance yeah. uh, about morality because it's their brand they're protecting, their perception of. Because yeah, uh, so and the other the other investigation uh, for the men was uh, on the post office side. Uh, the post office has been opening my mail specifically mail coming from the bank uh, uh, and receipt for money involving the mortgage of the property. Uh, they they have uh, uh, even sent me, the first time I noticed it was because I received the envelope with my receipt in a big plastic envelope that says, sorry, but uh, this envelope was open in error. Uh, how do you go about <laughs> making an error with a an envelope that comes from a bank that obviously has nothing in it except one piece of paper, which is the receipt for for payment? Uh, and and uh, the last one was seemed to be done with the the connivance of the bank because what they did is I always put a round off number of dollars in the account and say transfer to the mortgage. Well, that when they open the envelope doesn't tell them what the real payment is. So this time, the bank sent the receipt in an envelope that's not stuck closed. Uh, just a little dot on the flap uh, that could be uh, pulled away, checked inside. And what the bank had done is take my round number that I always send, and instead of applying it to the mortgage, they deducted the part that was surplus to the mortgage and sent it back to my account and then sent me a receipt with the exact amount of the mortgage payment. And I couldn't figure out why they would have done that. Uh, then the cell said it's because the bank and the post office were working together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They knew that the post office was trying to get that number, so they put it in a way in which the bank, the uh, post office wouldn't have to send me a notice that they opened the envelope. Oh. So what the cell asked me to do uh, as my part of the thing was to go to the post office, go to the counter, not just the box, post office box, but go to the counter, buy a couple of envelopes, put your keys on their, uh, beside their cash register on their counter, and leave them there. And we'll be checking, they said, what they do with your keys. Now, I don't know what the cell saw, but that was on Wednesday, and I had to go back on Saturday. And when I went back, uh, I said, you know, the only place I could have left my keys were here on the counter 
while I was paying for the envelopes. And uh, when I got home, I didn't have them anymore, so uh, they must be here. And the woman was uh, arguing with me because I had a joint account with Tom for the mailbox at the beginning, and she was saying, you know, the possibility of me getting anything was uh, limited because they didn't have what I have, which is a uh, uh, legal uh, management of Tom's financial affairs. You know, he, he didn't have any money, but uh, I had uh, the ability to go to his bank account and put money in or take money out uh, on my from my own card. So anyways, there was a lineup of people behind me. And only when she realized they were all listening to her and it, her side of the argument didn't make any sense because I showed her, here's a bill for his telephone. It's a, addressed to him, but at my address. Mm -hmm. you know? And I paid a bill, and I have for years. So uh, she uh, she said, uh, well, I wouldn't do this normally, but uh, I'll do it this just once. And she turned around and picked up my keys from the counter behind her. So she knew they were there all the time. And of course... There are not just the keys to the post office. There's 30 or 35 keys in two two groups that are tied together. Uh, and the cell wanted to get fingerprints of the people who were handling the keys, that kind of stuff. Anyways, that's why I didn't call you back this week. <laughs> Those two things kept me busy. Uh. Wow, Glenn, that's that's something I, I, you know, in my mind, I'm kind of worried about. When I think about it now, because they messed with with the whole, you know, electric bill. Now they're playing around with your mortgage payments. It's like they really are ramping it up as far as trying to get you off of that property. Yeah. They want this place, or they want me dead. That, nothing else explains what they've done to Jennifer. Uh, you know, kidnapping her without a judge's warrant, even having a judge tell them not to do it, and they did it anyway. And it was an Iranian working for Canada's border security. So there's something going on that is bigger than just me. No. It's something that is connected to world events. With uh, Donald Trump talking about a wall all the time, uh, and the Bible talks about Joshua fought the Battle of Jericho and the wall came tumbling down. Well, the OPP that has my case, his name is Joshua. And, and he's done uh, nothing that I know of uh, to meet his promise that he would do what he could to bring Jennifer back. He has received instructions, I guess, mind his own business. Or... He's in charge, and he's not doing it. With a name like Joshua in the OPP, defending policemen who arrested Jennifer without a warrant, 
on private property, married to uh, the owner along with herself as now owner of the property, and being told by a, a, a judge on a video conference not to do anything with Jennifer, they did it anyway. Why? What was so dangerous to them? Is it because they they have these ceremonies in California, they go and kidnap and rape women before they are allowed to become cabinet ministers? You look at Kavanaugh, the guy that's uh, wanting to be on the Supreme Court, and, and they're going after him for something he did when he was 17 years old, if yeah. he did it. Yeah. And, yeah, I heard something like that. They, he was said something, and this, they're, they're coming at him for saying something he said. Yeah, well, what, uh, he, what he said is he was angry. And and they're saying judge has no right to be angry. <laughs> <laughs> well, if somebody came at me for something that I did when I was seventeen years old, I wouldn't even know, you know, what it was they were talking about because I don't remember what I did when I was seventeen years old. But he had written it all down in a notebook, and and he he showed them that his father taught him how to keep a daily account of everything he did, and and he still has it. And he was able to say, you know, this is supposed to have happened on a weekend. I wasn't even in town on weekends. We were doing football practices someplace out of town. He was the quarterback of their team. How can they, how can people even like take it seriously about, uh, about something somebody did in their 17 years? Well, they obviously have some uh, important to them activity going on that they want to be able to control the courts. Now, what's going on with this guy, Kevin? Uh, is he... Was he showing any type of integrity, or is this somebody in their ranks that they don't want around in, 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 in that what, position? What he did... Uh, uh, did not show any sign of that. He's been investigated at different ranks of becoming judge, becoming a judge, uh, and the FBI has done all of the background checks. They never even mentioned the possibility of any complaint regarding sexual activity. Never mentioned it, but then a woman said when she was 16 and he was 17 40 years ago or 30 years ago, he was at a party where she was and she followed him into a bedroom with the two other guys, and he's the one who or tried to rape her. I don't know if it ever got done. Wow, that's just... I think maybe that's part of that whole... um, There's a movement... That's you know you know about it. The, they called it the Me Too movement, and it was it's it came out of the Hollywood guy Weinstein. And well, it 
It's women, not women. Yeah. yeah. They yeah. are the ones who want to control space, space travel. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that's what I'm, I've been seeing as far as the whole management up there. They're, it's, they're shifting. They're just taking control. They're changing uh, the narrative. The narrative we used to be, well, women, you know, are capable of doing this and that, blah, blah, blah. Men can, uh, can you know, lead a family, whatever. Now it's now women can be independent. They don't. Well, it's not all women. It's a women. special group of women. <laughs> yeah. And and they want to be hermaphrodites. They want to have children without the the uh, assistance of a male. What they don't yet grasp is so does the system want them to be hermaphrodites because they want to send them off to explore rocks in the universe. And if they find something, they'll be able to uh, unlock the uh, sperm that will make them pregnant and have uh, boys. Uh, in in space, millions of miles away. What they don't understand, I guess, is if if there's nothing of any value, they're not given the combination to open the safe, and they they basically die alone. The interesting, he said that they want to be hermaphrodites. They are being suckered, and they think they're they're going to be more powerful. They'll be they'll be lucky if one in a hundred survives. There's a, a spacecraft designed on the acorn for one person. And most of the journey will be asleep. While they're asleep, they're going to be programmed. And when they arrive on the rock they've been sent to, they're going to go on a search for what is there on this planet, on this rock, that uh, could, in fact, be useful back on Earth. So they'll they'll do all the chemistry tests and stuff like that. And if they find nothing of any value, that's it. They are hung up on and left there to die. So these, because, these they're not even... These uh, this new slave, it's not even like a settler, really. It's more of just a scout. It's not. It's a one one way journey. No coming back. Too far in yeah. a lifetime. Yeah. And I guess it'll. it'll wow. Well, and, and and I guess and they'll be sending out, or will it be like like so with the sperm, right? Will they send that out, or will that be already like within ready for insertion? Ready for insertion. So where will that be? It will be sent from Earth, or the the sperm? Will just no, be it will have accompanied them. But locked up in a safe. Oh, okay. (laughs) 
doesn't sound like in existence. <laughs> I'd want to live for it. No, but don't forget, they will be born on Earth, live to the age of six, be put in a capsule, and and exit the capsule uh, with the equivalent of an age of 20 years. Uh, wow, so they won't be, like, born in space or anything. I guess they, wow. That's, that's... All it is is lie down here and we'll feed you intravenously and uh, if it all works then uh, 14 years from now you'll arrive at at your destination and you have uh, maybe 20 or 30 years of exploration to do and and before you pass the age uh, where you could have children you will be uh, given the combination to the safe so you can make babies if you found something of value. Now, what will uh, companies like Tesla and and, uh, Amazon, uh, what will their role be? Because I've heard that, you know, I've seen that they... That's one of their goals is to, you know... Cell doesn't want to talk about any details but the superficial part. Oh. So they haven't told me any more than I just told you. (laughs) Hmm. Got to remember, the cell can sit in on their meetings without them knowing it. So they know a hell of a lot more than I do. Do do the cell tell you like what uh when they sit in, in meetings or where in the planet it is or what individuals the Well, I know they've sat in on police meetings and politicians meetings and bureaucratic meetings and and uh i never heard them say they sat in on military meetings but i su- suspect that there is a link between the cell and the military but it's only a guess on my part it's a guess based upon history And every country that has evolved over time has either had a monarch who has been deposed or a bureaucratic gang that revolted. And at the end, the bureaucrats always proved to be self-serving instead of serving the the, the people and uh, the military takes over. And we're at that stage right now. Where the military takes over? Yeah. It, it's more, uh, they talk about it on the other side. As soon as the bureaucrats get to a point where they are totally out of control, they take no instructions from above, and they give nothing to the people down below, all in the context of gimme, 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 gimme for themselves, that means the end of the bureaucracy is near. Democracy may be the best system in the world, but it no longer functions. The laws are changed uh, to uh, 
permit them to do the things they want to do rather than what is good for the people. When that happens, the military has taken over. And that goes all the way back to Egypt. You know, uh, in history, uh, you know, when, uh, Plato, Socrates, they they discussed democracy and they were very uh, suspicious of democracy. They didn't trust it. They 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 claimed that the democracy always ended in a tyranny. Well, know. democracy would be a great thing if it was ever to operate. But it only operates in theory and in classrooms <laughs> and on the media. Yeah. They'd have to have a whole other system and call it something completely different. Yeah. When I was uh, uh, laying charges in Ottawa against the politicians, uh, what I used uh, was a process called private prosecutions, which means that under democratic rule, an individual who has had difficulty getting prosecutors to do the right thing can file directly and and prosecute directly under the law called private prosecutions. Mm -hmm. Well, as soon as my case was done and I won, the Premier of Ontario, Bob Ray, and the Prime Minister of Canada, Brian Mulroney, got instructions from the media through the Globe and Mail newspaper that they had to change the law. And what they did was basically add into the section of private prosecutions a section that says can only occur with the permission of the prosecutor. Well, the prosecutor was the problem. The solution was private prosecution because the prosecutors were corrupt, and now they've returned to say you can't do private prosecutions without the permission of the guy you're trying to get around. So democracy in theory would have solved the problem. In practice, it never happened. They changed the rules of the game so that it could not be done again. And I think I told you once, I, I seem to remember, uh, my lawyer uh, had been a high-ranking member of the RCMP. And, and uh, he was sitting in a classroom in the year following his degree, they have to participate in a law firm and, and go to classes and stuff like that. And the uh, uh, the teacher was saying to the class that a crazy person like Glenn Keeley for example, he was talking in that period of time, a crazy person like Glenn Keeley mm -hmm. can go to court and have charges laid against senior politicians should not be allowed. <laughs> and my lawyer, who they didn't know he was my lawyer, was one of the students in the classroom. And he got up and he said, uh, um, maybe you don't know this, but I'm Glenn Keeley's lawyer. 
And if we take what you say to the class for granted, addressing the teacher, then a crazy person can go to court be heard by the most senior justice of the peace sitting in eastern Ontario with a 30-year impeccable background, come to the conclusion after hearing 16 witnesses or thereabouts, uh, most of them members of the RCMP, and come out of that saying there is sufficient evidence that this should go to trial. So what would you call the judge if she's taking a charge from a crazy person? Keeley did not charge the people. He simply asked that charges based on the evidence take place, and only the justice could make the decision on sending them to trial, <laughs> which she did. Mm -hmm. So is she crazy too? Or is the fact that you're trying to get across that Keeley is crazy makes no sense. Yeah, it's, it's dismissive. Oh, you're crazy. That's the, the key to diverting democracy is you call the person crazy. It doesn't matter that that person has never been to a psychiatrist has never been called crazy, has even been called in the newspaper uh, next to genius. And then because he charges politicians with the crime of setting up a 5% kickback system, then he's crazy. I told the Department of Health, I have a disability. It's a political disability. I tell the truth. <laughs> the minute I tell the truth, I'm crazy. Is that it? That's how it works? Yeah, well, people call you crazy because, you know, yeah. Because they're crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're crazy enough to, to go out and do things that make no sense and get away with it. Mm -hmm. So how can any citizen in the country believe that democracy functions when, number one, the, the justice deputy minister calls you crazy, then they teach lawyers in classrooms that people who charge politicians are crazy without considering that it's a judge that makes the decision, not the person. and then gives the person a pension based upon being crazy so that nobody in their right mind would, re would refuse a pension because that's the only thing they have left to live on. But I went to court with witnesses, and I said to the guy at the front, 
you guys are here as a panel to decide whether or not I'm to get a pension. If I'm going to get a pension based on psychiatric reasons, I don't want it. If I'm going to get it because I have a disability called truth, then I want it. And they said in front of the witnesses that were there, Mr. Keeley, we have nothing to decide here. We've been sent by the department to say you have a pension, period. And they got up and walked out. And I got $700 a month for something at the time. Uh Anyways, I got to call Jennifer. Yeah. All right, Glenn. Well, thanks for getting back at me. Um, Okay. You too. Uh, uh, Bye for now. Okay. All right.